Alright. Go ahead, Tim. <clears throat> Let's do it. I guess the first thing you... Everyone had a I chance. I guess the batteries weren't good. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> if everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the previous meetings I sent out, we can approve those. Except. I motion we approve the minutes from Except. the last meeting. Second. We have motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by yeah. sign aye. 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 Three zero. Great. Um, on to the director's report. Um, as you'll see, we had another pretty average month with 118 calls for service. Still pretty average with the mutual aid that came in eight times. Um, Greenfield was up from last month. We went 22 times to Greenfield. Um, so far this month, we've gone, you'll see the statistics for this month on the last page, because I didn't print them till today. We've gone to Greenfield 10 times. Um, and I broke things down a little further, just in case anyone was curious, with the ALS, BLS calls. Um, 80 of our calls required ALS treatment, five BLS, 21 were refusals, which is all pretty standard for how these things usually go. Um, Morgan is cleared, so that removes a huge chunk of shifts that we had to fill. She's now working with her regular partner. Um, and two of the three new per diems are cleared and are working. Um, they've been very eager so far. One of them's picked up six shifts already and the other's picked up like seven. So things are looking good on that front. We had mm -hmm. about half the department at the half marathon this weekend. It was uneventful, but we were well prepared if anything did happen. Um, we had to have, due to Wormtown, all the resources in Franklin County were busy, so we had resources coming up from down south. So Northampton was here. And then we had some EMTs from Hatfield that were here as well. Um, and I appreciate everyone's help. I broke down the overtime down here. Um, this should be the end of the high overtime months. I have, we had one guy go out with COVID last week who we were, I was able to cover all but 12 of it without overtime. So mm -hmm. this month we're looking at not much so far. Um, like I said, now that Morgan's cleared, we don't have that extra 40 hours. And my employee who's out on injury should be coming back next week. Um, so she was another big gap in the schedule, but we're looking Things are looking up from here. Lori just got back, and she can enlighten us on the grant information. Walk in the door, put your right on. Let's hear it. If you'd like to enlighten us on how the, the just the AFG grant. And yeah, yeah, so we got uh, 48, just shy of $48,000. I have, uh, we have to pay 5%, so the entirety of the grant is 50,000. We pay 2500 is ish. Um, I have ordered a cardiac monitor. The LifePack 15 has been ordered with um, all the things we would use um, in duplicate because someday when the third truck goes in service, we need backups. So we spent the extra money now to have all the secondary equipment. It's on order. It's 30 week lead time, is what they're telling us. Um, <coughs> It all came in around 46000 so once we pay out this order, that $4,000 is for our use with any high need item that's recognized under the AFG. So we could buy another AED, um, we can maybe do a stair chair or some, something of that sort. But, um, and we traded in our light pack 12 that's sitting upstairs in the attic collecting dust, it's basically a brick. Um, for $5,000, so it's actually extending the grant out to about $55,000, which can't, that, that um, trade-in can't be used as our offset, so we have to pay that $25-ish hundred dollars um, cash, but the trade-in brought the cost of everything down, and that also includes five years maintenance and warranty for the machine, which was about $7,500 that we pay for otherwise. <coughs> What's the life expectancy on the machines now? 10? Okay. Yeah, hopefully 10 years. And back to another topic that Lori's been helping me with is the CPE program. Um, this is the program offered by the state that helps offset the costs of Medicare or Mass Health patients because you'll see it in the breakdown of the back. Mass Health only pays us about $495 per transport. Um, and this program helps to offset that cost by giving us more money. We haven't finished running all the numbers yet, but we would assume somewhere between 20 and 40,000, I think is a conservative range. Yeah. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of time for us to do it. The deadline is next month. 
Um, we're waiting on some documentation from the state, but we, it's just waiting for Mass Health to be Mass Health. Um, but that should help give us a pretty good chunk of change to help <coughs> bring into the department. Um, I'm still waiting for Comstar to finalize us writing off all that debt sitting on the account. I've been emailing them every week, and every week they tell me it's taking longer than expected. So I can't speed up the process anymore. <coughs> I just keep reminding them that we exist. So. Um, I was about the CPE. Yeah, sorry. Um, we, they asked for a signed document from when we engaged in Mass Health billing in 2004. They want a copy of such document to confirm our enrollment. We don't have it. I've spent hours on the phone with Mass Health. I spent some time with Brenda today. Um, we have tertiary documents to, to say that we are enrolled and meet the standard. Um, I've submitted all the documents to the Office of Health and Human Services and are, that's our only glitch. As long as they accept all of our supporting paperwork, all the data, I'm cranking away on. Data, our end is, that is good, except for that one document. It seems like there may be some wiggle room. They just, yeah. it's up to, it's basically up to Mass Health to say if they're happy with the wiggle, like the supporting documentation we've given, so. If they push back, and we have some support from our state reps to push on Mass Health. It sounds like a lot of others, this is not a problem that's unique to us, and okay. it sounds like there's a lot of push on Mass Health right now that something needs to change, but I don't, they don't, the, at least when I watched the presentation, they didn't seem like they had faith something was gonna happen quickly, but it does seem like there should be enough of us doing this without that supporting information that I'm, I'm not anticipating it being a problem, but I guess we'll see is the best answer we can give right now, is we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. I would say if you start to get pushed back, or we start to get close to the deadline, reach out. Carolyn? Carolyn, I mean, if we were looking to engage our rep or senator, anybody on the select board can help, or um, Casey, yeah, but we would have to have some support at least. I have a cover letter from on Deerfield Letterhead from Jessica Lake, who submitted this document to the state, and it says, "Please find our attached agreement." We don't have the attachments, so and then we have a, a receipt email from Mass Health saying it's approved. Here is your account numbers. That account, that legacy account number, is still intact today that we use. So it seems like all of our supporting documents should be appropriate. Okay. Um, but the Office of Health and Human Services, Medicare office, is what has to be like, yep, you're great. Um, meeting the October 15th guideline, uh, deadline for all our data entry, not a problem. I, I spent time with Brenda today. I got everything I need. Um, it's just that odd piece that you have to wait for the state for. Okay. And we can also file a deadline if, if something yes. weird happens, or a deadline yeah. extension. Okay. Um, so. I just wanted to give you yeah, no, I suggestions. Appreciate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want this getting hung up by a bureaucrat in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speak, speaking of Comstar, we have the, so there's all the old debt that we needed to write off, and now we're on to new debt as of July 1st. Um, so far, and I broke it down into July and August, in July, there is $252.21. I feel like we should write off. These are people who are on Mass Health or Medicare, um, and this is just extra charges being levied on them. So they're people on fixed incomes. And then in July or in August, there's $783.98. I think we should write off. It's the same thing. These are people on Mass Health and Medicare. Um, the additional $27,000, I feel, is worthy of going to collections. And my justification for that is. We've always had a very lenient policy, and if you send us a letter, a hardship letter, which is included with every bill and request a hardship, we write it off. But these are all bills that are just being ignored. So I, obviously that's up to you guys to decide on debt that gets written off and stuff, but that's my thoughts on the situation. I would, I would concur. If they don't respond, then we've sent the appropriate notice, then send it to collections. They get three bills. Comstar sent reaches out to them three times before we get the option to send them to collections. 
Um, and then the other question I have to the board is, is there a minimum amount we should be sending to collections? Because a few of these $26,000 is like a $150 bill. Like, do we send those to collections or do we write those off? My attitude in the past when I was director was we would try to collect everything we could. Okay. If somebody had said, I can only afford $5 a month, I would take $5. I wasn't looking to hit somebody with 30% interest charges. Right. <clears throat> I would take the $5 a month until I could pay it off. If it was a hardship, then my thought was we could, I would verify it with the town that it was a true hardship. Um, tax collector treasurer could look and evaluate what would be considered a hardship and then based on their recommendation you know we can write about that was just my my thoughts i think so is this after insurance just so our so cost it depends on the individuals most of this cost is people who are uninsured or we don't have the insurance information and comps are unable to figure it out um some of it is secondary like you have blue cross blue cross pays two thousand you owe the right. extra 600. Um, it's a combination of that and no insurance identified or self-pay identified. Um, some of them are from motor vehicle accidents where the $150,000 or whatever you have in your policy has been exhausted and no longer covers that aspect of it. And for some reason it didn't go to health insurance. I don't know if that's because that person doesn't have health insurance. Um, the disposition report I get is very not specific. It just says either self-pay um, or like a deductible or something. I, I think I think it's a very again I don't think the the food wanted to be part of that decision making process per se we didn't we didn't want to know the specifics about the individual residents of, of the town and or the people that are right. so I, I would say if you're asking for guidance on what you should go I would say you know we should try one or two and again they just have to write a letter and send a letter you know and then it has to be expressed with a collection agency just send the letter and try so yeah okay or just even educating the the people who owe money which i would hope you know the billing company does because i didn't have a clue when we had our accident that once the car insurance was exhausted that I could actually bundle up all those bills and send them to blue cross Blue Shield. right i had no clue we were writing checks left and right, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know. I at least try to educate people when I transport them. I'm like, hey, auto insurance doesn't cover this. Send it to your insurance. But that's can't like that's not always the exactly. Case. Right. And you, you don't remember crap after right. <laughs> certain <laughs> accidents, anyways. But yeah, you could certainly ask Comcast if they could make that mention when they. Yeah, I, I can. I'll, mm -hmm. She's been very receptive. Our, the representative up there. I'm honestly shocked at how receptive she is to getting back to me and answering questions. So, okay. okay. So yeah, are we? We're we're basically telling you, yeah, send this twenty, almost twenty-seven thousand collections. Okay. Uh, and and you know we haven't been doing any of this as far as I can tell. As long as I've been on the boo, I've never heard a discussion about collections. It's never happened in South right. County's history. So, I think it's a good test case to see you know what our expectations would be, and maybe we get a report later saying you know. 50% of this was Blue Cross because they're typically underpay, underpaying people and, and it's going to bring our collections from them up to the 95% that we're in the other, you know, so I think it's a good idea to see what they do. So, so 27,000, how long of a period is that over? Just the past year? It's, I mean, drive my other report, I can give you an educated answer. Thank you for the work on the firefighter grant and getting oh, that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. The work that you're doing um, on that firefighter grant, you said with the trade-in. So with the trade-in, with the new uh, life pack coming and the equipment that goes with it, the net balance or our net credit, is it $4,000 or is it 4000 plus the five for the trade-in? About 4000 Okay. Yep. The monitor, um, the way we built it out, came out to be, I want to say it was like 46,000, 48,000, <coughs> it was 48, and that brought it down to 43,000 after the trade-in, okay. and then we opted to do the five-year maintenance plan and buy all the extra accoutrements, yes. so that all the stuff there's no extra cost down the road, um, so then we 
that brings us to about uh, 4,000 we could use on a project later. Okay. Do they offer a 10 year maintenance plan or only up to five? I, I don't think the town's allowed to sign into any contracts yeah, longer than five years. That's what Casey told me, okay. it's five years. That's, that's my understanding. Could you, well, I guess my thought is when those five years are up, it'll be another five year mm -hmm. maintenance agreement. We should probably find out what that maintenance agreement is going to cost. I think currently we might bundle like our sh all of our stretchers and current monitors otherwise. Okay. So it might. That's my understanding of how it operates. So is it any idea what the maintenance? It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Okay. I think the upfront cost is like eighteen. I think right now we say eighteen thousand for our stretchers, power loaders, and monitors. Okay. Eighteen uh, annually. All right. Um, I guess my thought is, do we just put that in the budget when it comes, or do we start putting away three or four thousand dollars a year now, so that when it comes up in five years? In my opinion, reoccurring reoccurring costs should be part of the budget, because I mean, because they're you know, so how you, it's hard to save it because it's a reoccurring cost. So mm -hmm. I think if if we think about that, we should put it in the budget, and it should, and it should live in the budget. So just so I make sure I understand what you said, Lori, is there a blanket policy that's 18000 that covers all kinds of equipment, or is it each one of them? I think that's, I, I haven't been involved with any of this mm -hmm. setup in the past, so I'm, mm -hmm. I know the $18,000, I'm pretty sure, is the total cost of our preventative maintenance package with them. I'm just not sure, too sure about the nitty gritty of it. Um, I, I don't know if they're itemized and we and that's yeah. just what the sum total is or if we get like a, a lump. Yeah, I, lump. I don't think it's a uh, the reason why I ask is because with the new light pack it's not like you're necessarily going to be paying a separate bill for that we will or not for you, five years right and then once the five years is up you're going to group it into this I would that would be my assumption right mm -hmm. okay and the other life packs that we're going to buy that we are authorized or they, are, are they, they just came they out. went in the service this week yep. okay so that's oh. fantastic did, were, did we buy five year plans on them too i don't we did not we did not okay i think it but i think it's because we already <coughs> had the preventive maintenance plan they just went into the plan we've already paid for okay i yeah. think that's my understanding I, um, I, I wrote the grant because we could right. put that per maintenance plan in the way mm -hmm. federal funds allow it so mm -hmm. I was like, well, if it's allowable, we're, yeah, right. I've, I put it in the quote. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> um, Crystal, to answer your, all of the, or maybe I'll answer your question, none of the debt that's going to collections is older than 2022. So I don't know, I don't know how these end up, like this is the new disposition report. I don't know how, like what makes Comstar decide what comes to me each month, mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest. I don't know if that's when they, like the time frame they exhaust their letters. Um, some of it is from last month and some of it's from last December. So I can reach out to her and get a specific answer, but I'm, yeah. My guess is if you're getting on a disposition report, it's they collected money from insurance or something yeah. and it may take a while mm -hmm. to get all that done. Um, so, and just so I want to understand, so for the debt to be written off, the Deerfield Select Board has to vote for that. Uh, what did I say? Two two fifty two in July. Yeah, the two fifty two in July and the seven eighty three. That has to go to the Deerfield Select Board, or you know, I'm not hundred percent sure about that, but um, it has know, in the past. I know we. Yeah. Um, okay. You should definitely report it to Casey and say we're not this meeting, but the next Select Board meeting. We need to put this on there. You know, I think you want to report it as two different ones. Okay. And I would probably run it by the town tax collector treasurer sure. just to make sure that the people who are saying are yeah, I mean, Brenda, Brenda and, um, and Sarah Kimball probably should be CC just, you know. Yeah, I'll talk to Brenda this week. Yeah, okay. this week? Yeah, this week. Um, I forgot what day it was. And I'll see what's been done in the past and how we usually handle it. Okay. Um, yeah, good to get her check on it. I know we voted at one meeting to do a, a huge chunk. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, 
And the next thing I have in my director's report, which is also on the agenda, is the MOA with South Deerfield. Um, this is for, if you guys have any concerns with it, um, we should obviously send it to legal as well, just to make sure that it's all good. Um, South Deerfield looked at it as well, and they didn't see anything that concerned them, but just to make sure that you guys are all okay with it before we have legal double check and then get it signed by everyone. Um, Fred, do you have yeah, no, I just let the lawyer double check it, just to be sure. Okay. Yeah, that was that, Tim. That's good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, wrong Tim. Next up. Um, next up. I skipped ahead too many pages now to find it. Uh, this is the, we got the new Lucas's and the new life packs. They're all in service. Everything's working great, which is great. Um, we were periodically having issues with those old life packs, so it's good that we have the new ones. We started carrying one of the new medications that the pumps allow us to carry. Um, and it's arguably a better medication than what we had before, so that'll, that's good. We'll be carrying another new medication once it's off national back order. And I don't really have any control over that. The pharmacist told me it could be a while, so it could be a while. The truck vendors have gotten back to us. Um, the numbers are high, as you can see. Um, PL Custom came back at 419, 347, Lifeline at 434, 975, and Horton at 462, 500. Um, now, worth noting with these numbers is they include $60,000 to replace our oldest stretcher and auto loader. Um, that is something we could reallocate money into a capital expense, if my understanding is correct. Um, and the upfront cost of the truck would be lower. We'd still have to pay that expense down the road as one of our stretchers is quite old and does need to be replaced. Um, and the auto loader system. <coughs> I guess it needs to be replaced as well, according to Stryker, but there's also third party services that may be willing to service it. We have to get it serviced by the state. The state requires we get this equipment to service. It's just that we've reached the point where Stryker is no longer willing to service it as of 2024. Because of its age? Yes, they're saying they no longer recommend the equipment is being used. There are agencies that have third party services service the equipment. And my understanding is the state only cares that it's being serviced. Um, as long as the equipment functions, in my mind, it's not a as much of an issue for the auto loader. The stretcher though is 15 years old and really should be replaced, but the auto loader, I need to do more research into seeing what kind of third party services are around here. Um, obviously that would be an additional cost because currently Stryker, all of our maintenance is bundled together, we talked about, um, and this would be a different cost that I'm just not familiar with. And so speaking of both of these auto loader stretcher, each of your good ambulances has this equipment? All three trucks have it, yeah. So do all of them have, I mean, are, are the other ones functioning fine? Are they, you know? They're, they're all, they're, they're functioning fine for the most part. And the oldest one has some quirks that it's been having. Um, the, the technical problem that's gonna come up down the road, I think 2025, 2024, is that Stryker is now saying, even though we have stretchers that are older than seven years old, they're now saying that they won't service these stretchers anymore. So something is going to have to change down the road, whether that be we buy all new stretchers and auto loaders, or we find a third party maintenance to do it. But for some reason, Stryker is now has their problem that our stretchers that are older than seven years old are now no longer gonna be serviceable. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. So we should be looking for third parties to find out if there are any out there that are Reputation. Right, because I just I didn't even realize that was an option until recently, so I haven't done as much digging into it. But okay. I'm going to look into it further. Um, and but how long are these quotes good for? These so Lifeline has guaranteed this quote through the end of October. Um, PL won't give us a hard number. We emailed back to them and said that we need a, a hard number to go forward, and I I haven't heard that we've got that email back yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and Horton, I think, is just ridiculously, is too high to consider, to be honest. Um, and who makes ones you have now, Tim? PL Custom. Um, they're being difficult, like, to say that I, like, it's, it's, they're not being so difficult we can't work with them, they're just being less flexible than would be ideal, I guess. It's okay. Um, the Lifeline truck, um, the way it was spent, were all the things that we didn't we didn't love about what our PL our current trucks 
we, the current trucks we have are great. They're built, designed really well. There were a couple little things we wanted to modify. PL was, just came back with a hard, nope, can't do it. Lifeline said, we can do it. This is what, you know, it's going to obviously cost for some modifications. So the Lifeline truck is actually built with all of the small modifications we were hoping for. And PL is essentially a twin to what we currently have. And what about Horton? Horton, we we told them all the things that we wanted to do, and they they built it to the like like lifeline. I think. Yeah, and that Horton has some part of that cost is they have extra safety features like extra airbags and stuff that other. They seem to be the only manufacturer who's offering that stuff. It does come at a significantly cost, increased right? cost. So none of these. Uh, basically, the the PL is one type of truck, and these other prices are higher because there's other stuff on them, and Horton's just pricier for the design. Yeah, PL, we're basically getting the same thing we already have. There's right. nothing in here. Yeah. You're trying to compare apples to apples. Yep. Yeah. Two of these are not apples. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but hopefully PL will, will get back to us soon. Obviously, the sooner we can book, the cheaper things are not by submit, but the longer we wait, the more expensive it gets. Um, <clears throat> but and I don't know enough about how the capital would play out for the reallocating that money or allocating money down the road. Um, so that's a conversation that we have to have as well if we, once we I get the information about the third party service and how those things will work. So, so one of the things about, so one of the things about ordering the, the stretchers and the auto load loaded through the manufacturer is that now you're going to have to pay that manufacturer's markup also. Allegedly, and I'm, I we looked into that. Yeah, um, we, I had that same thought. Yeah. And um, it, we've been doing so much business with Stryker this year yeah. that the cost, they, the quote that they gave us, is about exactly what the, the builders are giving us. Is they get a discount. I guess yeah. the builders get a discount when they buy them. So there's n so their markup isn't going to be more I than what I thought they all ruled out monopolies a long time ago. <laughs> 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 well, they'll tell you that it's another manufacturer of stretcher, so it's yeah. not really a monopoly. Uh, Stryker, I think, Beep. bought them all. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to the, the life pack that we got the grant for, we had allocated 150000 for these, right? Right. So the 50000 is going to go back to the revolving fund, or what will happen to it? My understanding is it goes back into that uh, retainer. 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 Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yes, there's an extra $50,000 we planned on spending that now we're not spending. Which will help with the, help. the cost of the escalating uh, ambulance. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I guess for the next meeting, I'll try to get that information for you guys, and we'll go from there. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. Trucks are also two years out. Right. They're saying 18 to 24 months once we sign a contract. Which is why, like talking about, do we buy a power loader outside of? without, you know, not push, pushing it down the road, it could go in fiscal year 25's budget because we have a year and a half to wait on it. Yeah, and the lead time on those smaller components is not as great as the, the ambulance. I don't know the answer to that. Because I mean, if they're, they're sort not, They're not tomorrow, yeah. but I would imagine it's within six months. I, I think we could definitely, like if we bought it later, like we could definitely line up things so they would work out. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we had at least a year's notice, which I'm sure we would, like things would work out. Because I know it didn't take us a year to get, when we first bought the auto loaders, it didn't take us a year to get those installed. At least not that I'm aware of. I could be misquoting. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the end of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So with the trucks, once we, if we vote to go ahead with this, <coughs> do these then have to go out to bid? No. No. This is all per state. Yeah, because they're all on the, whatever the list is, the, the state yeah. list. Okay. All right, so are we looking, you to get some numbers for us for next month? Yes. Are we then looking to take a vote at the next meeting? I would think that's probably a safe bet because we should do it sooner than later. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure. I, I'm asking this question because I don't know the answer to it. Maybe some other select board members do. Um, but we need to get this onto a special town meeting thing. We don't necessarily have, 
if we're not going to get it for October, we could get it for April. I mean, the new know. truck. Yeah. It I mean, was. It was already, last, last we town meeting. Approved, yeah. but not yeah. at this not at this price. So, yeah, so we're good. Is, is all I'm just I asking see. Yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Do you have to, even if we have that return date, returned earnings from saving the money from yeah. the monitor? It do may you be, need to still? Yeah, we may not have to make any adjustment. I guess that's like the brand of the calculate. And then maybe it all comes out in the wash. If we can get some sort of report on that, of what the finances on this are compared to what was done in town meetings. I seem to remember what we voted on for the cost. Was it 350? 375. Yeah. 375. Yeah. So this is. All right. So if we did. Because that's what I wrote that, that we got the quote in the fall um, because I wrote the AFG for the replacement of that truck. Um, and so we based it on that quote, which was okay. 375 last fall. Mm -hmm. So this truck has gone up almost 50 grand. It was based on um, PL Customs quote. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's gone up 25 to 45. Yeah. And I'd also like to hear what you know, an argument for the lifeline, you know, the equipment that you want in there, but isn't. Yeah. You know, how does that affect service? And some of it has to come do with maintenance costs, and Zach isn't here tonight to speak about it. But for some reason, with PL, with their inverters, we keep having issues, and part of the lifeline cost is to have separate the battery charger and the inverter. I think it's only like a few thousand more dollars built into lifeline, but we've spent. I don't remember what, between four and six thousand dollars fixing the inverters because they keep um, getting burnt out and PL won't acknowledge the issue, I guess. Um, we, years ago, we had bought a, I think it was a road rescue, and we had electrical gremlins in that truck, and it was a nightmare because it's just chasing down one thing after yeah. another after another, and it just gets to be the biggest cost gets to be the time and the tech doing the chasing down. Yeah, well, down. the question is, is it worth the fifteen thousand dollar difference? Right. Yeah. yeah, to because the, and then there's also obviously batteries aren't that expensive, but the issue with PL is it when the truck's plugged in, it draws all the power from the batteries, and then we recharge the batteries is how it works, and the batteries blow up, and we have issues where trucks don't start. And it's not good. It's, it's not, not ideal. It's, it's not when ideal. You need to use it emergently. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but Zach will hopefully be here. We'll have to schedule the next meeting, but Zach will hopefully be here to talk about the maintenance costs next time. Okay. Um, trucks they had to fix the garage door again because they put the wrong spring in my understanding is they, they didn't charge anyone for that as it should be okay um, and we have a meeting I have to meet with Paturic and um, Scarborough the highway guy for the plyma vent system just to see what that's gonna end up costing we had allocated them or you guys had allocated money years ago but just to see what that change has been if money has to be reallocated and stuff um, so I think that's in early October. Just so you know, we just did that, it, uh, applying whatever that is in Sunderland Fire. So happy to okay. talk to you about what, what we paid. And Perfect. I'll reach out to you soon then. Because I know there's some nuances with some of how that worked out. Yeah. Or not necessarily with you guys. I know South Deerfield Fire had some issues when they put it in with vendors and such. So. Yeah. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Think <laughs> some of that. Um, and then the other thing in my director's report is the proposal for some additional compensation for the people who are helping me out a lot. Um, I broke down the money from money that was budgeted and available and divided up based on, it's not 100% divided up based on the amount of work that's being done, but it's as fair as I could make it, I feel like. Um, I want to stipulate that by giving people extra compensation, their responsibilities aren't, like they're, they're not becoming supervisors, nothing changing is the hierarchy. This is just to help cover the gap until we have a chief and a deputy, like until we have a full administrative team. Um, because if I had to do all this stuff by myself, I would never leave here. Um, but my proposal is to give Zach, who is serving as our logistics coordinator, he's handling the vehicle maintenance and the IT stuff, he arguably is, has to be here the most off-duty. Um, obviously, stipends don't prevent overtime, but when you come in, you can work against that stipend until you reach that number of hours. Um, so I think the $300 a month for him is fair. Um, and Alicia Toya is my, 
she was working with for with operations with me when Zoe was still here, and she's been working as operations, managing supplies, call outs. She's been going to some of the special events meetings for me. Uh, she doesn't have to do nearly as much extra work as that, but I think that an extra two hundred dollars is fair. And Lori obviously has been working with grants and um, helping with the CPD program, and I may have another project for you helping with as well. Um, and for her, I was recommending 150. I would like to recommend more, but I'm going with the money I have available and the certain budget line items. But if everyone's fine with that, that's my recommendation for it. There's an extra $650 a month. And as I know, we're currently minus my 1500, there's $8,000 a month that was allocated for our current director, who is obviously not here right now. So we have a little bit of wiggle room to play with. Um, there was also some Money that it looks like Zoe had budgeted into lieutenant and captain's accounts or positions that has never been um, divvied out, and that's where I'm taking all this money from. Is it was built into the personnel part of the budget as an extra six hundred and forty dollars a month. So I'm asking asking for ten dollars more than that. Um, Didn't we talk about this at the last meeting? We did. And, and Car Carolyn, uh, I, I spoke to Carolyn. She she was um, understand. She relayed a lot of the additional work. I just want to. When, when we get a mo motion to vote, I just take it a motion to vote that uh, it's not uh, to set precedent, but it's during this period of not having the chief. Oh, I, yeah, I wanted to, and I think it's in my proposal. This, when we have a new chief, this needs to be, yeah. like, this is not a permanent thing. Yeah, and that's all I'd look, I'd look for in the motion. All right, I'll make a motion. Um, can I, sorry. Sure. I would like to add, and Carolyn mentioned before, that it be retroactive? Yes. Okay. Yes. If, if everyone is fine with retroactive, just because this work has been being done, it's not. Retroactive to when? To July uh, 1. July, July, July. July. Yes, because the, Lori, Zach, and Alicia have been helping me since day one. No, just want to. Yep. Put on a record. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the stipends as presented retroactive to July 1 under the stipulation that the stipends are paid until such point as a new chief of the department is in place, at which point we will evaluate continuing or discontinuing. We wait, we wait for a recommendation from the chief. Pending a recommendation from the new chief after that chief starts in that position. Second. Okay, I'm open to me. And second, any additional conversation? And again, I, I just think it shows the the depth and breadth of the uh, of the department and and the dedication of all that serve. Um, and I, I know I appreciate it, and I believe the board and their residents, our three communities, appreciate it also. Without hearing any other discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Six zero. Great. Thank you, guys. Like I said, I couldn't do it without them. No, we, we certainly appreciate it and appreciate you for bringing this forward because I believe that people need to be taken care of for the additional efforts that you And thank you and the others for doing it without the guarantee that yes. it would be approved. Yeah, it certainly oh, does. The last thing is the new chief working group. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, so I've I've heard. I don't know if you've all talked amongst yourselves. I've heard from each town individually. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is Deerfield is recommending John Petrick. That's correct. Sunderland is recommending yourself, sir. That's what I've been told. <laughs> and I'm told. Waitley is recommending um, Chief Kennedy. Kennedy, Kennedy right. Okay. Um, JP Kennedy. JP. And then I would say that we need uh, Casey's going to be. Right, in addition to Casey and Ken, we yes. need Casey to send out an email to those uh, members so we get, get a meeting going, okay? Okay. So we'll organize that tomorrow. And I appreciate the uh, three boards, well, two, at least two of the boards. Uh, <laughs> Do we, do we um, have any, um, uh, without, do we have any numbers of people who responded to the 
I don't know because they like, they couldn't tell me yet, and I was waiting to reach out to Casey until we had so I could just have one big conversation. Okay, that's fine. Um, just I know there's at least a few, but I'm sure there's more than a few. I just don't know the number. Okay. okay any uh, anything good for the South County EMS? For the South County what? Anything of interest or? Unanticipated. Oh, there's the um, the lease renewal that we, I guess Casey sent out. Oh, I thought we talked about that. Is my am I having a brain fart? Did yeah, I I thought uh, Fred we had talked yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 and that and, and, and Fred we were going to look at. Oh, the, right. Uh, I'm sorry. My brain. Yeah, my brain. That's okay. All right. All right. Um, let's see. And I think. Oh, and as the billing for refusals thing. I spoke with Western Mass EMS, um, and he told me that it's been tried quite a few times, and the way that billing for ambulances works in the state of Massachusetts is that you can only bill somebody if they're transported on the ambulance. Um, there's been some agencies that have tried to do it, and the, the debt has been ruled uncollectible, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I guess the bill is very specifically worded that you to bill for EMS services, you have to be transported in an ambulance. Um, so it's not really a possibility, it seems. Right. But thank you for reminding me to, because I forgot to put it on there. Is it, again, I ask, is it time to go to legislators and ask them to re examine that legislation? Part of it becomes when we were, years ago when we were all volunteers, we did this for nothing, it was no big deal. But now as we look at cost, if that truck's got to go 10 to 12 miles somewhere and the provider's going to put hands on people and take a blood pressure, check them, review, have them sign paperwork, there's a cost to doing that business. Um, I don't want to discourage people from calling an ambulance, but by the same token... There, there are a lot of people that won't call an ambulance now because of cost. Well, I yeah. run into it every time I there's people who I treat all the time who are like I like I can't afford to call you but I'm calling you because I need to and I just that's, right. that's I, what I, makes me nervous and I think that's the fine the fine line that we walk unfortunately and if, if someone's re going to refuse service then we don't probably need the service yeah I know there are some sometimes where it's an automatic yeah um, Active fire scenes, auto accidents, you know, things like that, you'll automatically get called. There are other times. I know. Someone's yeah. choking, you call, you show up, you always hope that their airway is clear and they're okay and they'll tell you to go home because they're all set. They just. It, I feel like the, the, it will, and I could be wrong, with legislature, it'll run at the issue where when someone else calls for you, like, when, like, when I see, right. like, you, you, you're you bent down to tie your shoe, yeah. but they're like, he's over there, he fell over, and then, like, we go there, and you're like, I don't want you, and they're like, here's a bill for $150 or something. Like, oh. Right, and known epileptics, mm -hmm. where people call for them. No. Right, and they're yeah, fine, they have seizures, like, they don't... They, they know how to manage yeah, it and yeah. everything else, it's just, yeah. Okay. It's a tough one. Um, and speaking about billing, I just wanted to... I don't know how this was handled in the past, so maybe it, you guys had something specific. Um, just to talk about, we should plan at least at one point in the year when we um, adjust our rates. Um, Comstar said usually services do it once a year. I don't honestly know how it happened in the past, so I figured... We had, we, we, we had gone like five years without looking at the rates, so okay. it's something that we should probably... we we got to look at the budget. I mean, our budget goes up, our rates should go up. Right. Right? Um, I would think for so for and just for the for the sake of you guys all knowing what the data I put in here is, um, there's one page that says Comstar at the top that shows our current rates and then the average Comstar rates for all the all of Comstar's uh, com services they service, and we're relatively close on that. Those rates we're a little low, but we're not super low. Um, and when you compare them to Franklin County's rates, though, we're significantly lower and I'm kind of confused by this information but we're we charge a lot less than a lot of the other services in Franklin County um, so I think we'll just have to consider that information as well <coughs> when we go and look at the budget excuse me and look at this information there's also the fact that a lot of our patients are Medicare patients and 
we don't get to, like we get whatever we get for them. Yeah, we're actually the lowest lowest cost provider in the county. Correct. <coughs> um, I'm probably one of the few that's got a 24/7 paramedic available. Yeah, unfortunately, they won't tell me who those X's are. Yeah, they just said. Okay. Well, I'm I'm just curious, but um, and it's also some of these may be BLS services, and like I said, because of how billing for ambulances works, they have to charge. They charge if we do like an intercept or something, and then we they send us the intercept fee. So I think some of that is them offsetting their those costs, but I'm not sure. Um, but this way, you guys have this information when we have this conversation down the road. We'll have the information available. I think we should probably raise rates sooner rather than later, and then make it an agenda <coughs> topic to raise them every year for July one at the beginning of the new fiscal year. Unless you want to raise January one. That was what Comstar recommended. Yeah. January one. That's what I, I guess. That's what it seems weird to me because everyone uses the fiscal year. That's but. fine. I'll go with the recommendation. Well, it's probably having to do with insurance payments too, because that's usually when you get your new. You know, people with insurance, right. medic, all that's yeah. usually effective. That, that goes by calendar year. Mm -hmm. So, so if you could yeah. put that on our next, usually I'd like to put things on the agenda at least once before we take a vote on it, mm -hmm. so we have an opportunity to discuss. You know, at least one meeting. So let's put it on the agenda for next meeting. Okay. Okay. The rates. When you look at, we were just talking about a new ambulance going up forty-five thousand dollars. Oh, I, I, so. I. I, I <coughs> I also like to see how how we do on our collections also, mm -hmm. and, and because I think I, I think as our system matures, we sh we should be collecting those those dollars, and 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 I I think it'd be nice to compare what do other communities pay for well cite a certain community that North has some like I guess but. Find out what you know what what a cost is for providing an ALS system. Okay, Jeffrey, you have anything to add tonight? No. Nope. You good? I'm oh, good. And I just wanted to. So when should we host our next meeting? I guess is my next conversation because our next scheduled one is in November. Um, I feel like we should have one just to have an update on how the hiring process. What one in October? Going. We probably should. Second week of October then. What's that? Off, if the offer on the ambulance is Good effective until the, yeah. the end of October, we should yeah. at least Second consider it before that. Would be the day after Columbus Day. Doesn't matter to me. I don't know if it matters to anyone else. Um, tenth, the 10th meeting. Yes, I'm sorry. You good with that? Yep. So it be written, or so it be said, so it be written, whatever. Uh, I've got a select board meeting on the 10th. In Whiteley? Probably have one too, Crystal. Oh, do I? Yeah. What about the five days of holiday? We'll probably right. have one on Tuesday. We're not going to just skip it that way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's going on. 17th, then? Yes. Tuesday the 17th? That must, that must be a five, that must be a five Tuesday week. It is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a conflict? Mm -hmm. What is Thursday look like? The 19th? Or Thursday the 12th. I'm, I'm free the 12th. 12th? 12th is good for me. Did, do you have the 12th? Was there a select board meeting? Nope. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. I apologize. Yeah. So Thursday the 12th? Tim? I can't do the 12th. I've got another meeting that night. I'm sorry. Oh, I know where you're going to be. 19th? 19th? 19th. 19th good for all. I'm, I'm just trying to get out of my calendar here. To, yeah, we'll put out that post it's great when it works like it should. Yeah. Huh? Okay. All right. I just had a couple of things for the next agenda that I've been asked to ask about. Um, the, and we sort of refreshed it, but the SRT conversation to add to the next agenda, Greenfield reached out to me. They also sent a supporting letter for us to continue to be on the team. Um, but I will present that information at the next meeting if we're good putting it on the agenda. <clears throat> I know there was concern from Deerfield on the SRT mm -hmm. about, um, which we, I guess we should just save it for the next meeting. Yeah, we'll I mean, we, I, we can talk roughly about it. it's about insurance, and our town doesn't have insurance for this kind of stuff. 
and um, so you know, I'm not sure we're going to. We have to sign an MOU, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't. I wasn't on it when you guys approved it before, so yeah. um, You know, I don't know what thought was given to it, and you know, it'd be nice to have some explanation of what SRT actually. I can involved. try to have Matt Wilkenbright, who works for Union Nine Hundred One, is our training liaison. He helps set up the whole team. Um, so I can try to see if he'll be available to come in and talk to everyone good. about it. That would be good. Um, I'll send him an good. email and see if he's available. Yeah, and I think part of the insurance question is, um, we're not, I think there were some first responders who were actually potentially armed. No one who was not a police officer. Zoe, as a police officer, was carrying a firearm, but no member. There's a police officer from another town, which was one of the concerns that Deerfield had. Um, so. Um, you know, but it, I, they sent me the the their standard operating procedures, and nowhere in their standard operating procedures does the SRT allow a medical person to carry a firearm. Good. But so, so Tim, what I would do, if you could, between now and that meeting, yep. I would work closely with the town of Deerfield. So they seem to, you know, because they're the lead agencies, understand what they need mm -hmm. to make that happen. Okay, so that we we can discuss. So we, we can discuss if we should or shouldn't, but we need to know what is going to be required. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, as a fiscal agent, was the one who raised the concerns. So make sure yeah. we work closely with yeah. Carolyn to find out what the concerns are and get those addressed so that hopefully the meeting will be able to make a mm -hmm. decision. Yep. Um, and then the last thing I had a question about if we were to have a conversation on it or if we're going to want to push it down the road is um, the discussion about having a detail rate for covering special events. I know we've sort of had conversations in the past, but a more formal conversation about formalizing that. Um, I thought we were going to do it as a detail. Didn't we discuss that? We, we never had a vote on it or anything, and we never decided if we were setting it up as a revolving account or how we were doing it. Um, well, I, it you had, you had talked, you had, we, we'd have to talk to, we'd have to talk to the, again, talk to the fiscal agent how they want to, how they want to run it. Because we can't hold money, right? So it has to be going for them. So typically, I know they don't like to. to, to re, they don't like revolving a. Right, seemed. To, I've had a casual conversation. She didn't. They just sent one up for the fire district as well. So it didn't seem like she was thought it was going to be too big of a deal. But yeah, well, I, I, there's a lot of things I don't understand about how certain towns do certain <laughs> things. But I, I'm just saying, typically, most auditors and, and accountants frown. On that, not that you can't do it, but they frown right. on its on their use. Mm -hmm. um, so see how how. Do I'll, I'll chat with people and see. We what have to make sure how we want to we want to we want to again that that's that's the back that's the kind of the backstory type of thing. I I like the idea of breaking it out to a separate account. This way we can see what's coming in and yeah. pay people, and this way it doesn't affect your overtime and it's right. yep. easily isolated, especially as I think our our property neighbors to the north will have more events in the future and it's going to require more of these things. And right, because I built them obviously for the other day, but it's still like we the money comes in, but it still comes out of the overtime account, right? But well, well, the money the money comes in, but then it goes to the town of Deerfield, right? It doesn't go to South, doesn't go to South Town, right? I was gonna say they've got, but they've South Town is actually paying for it. You, you've got to what works best for you, right? And not necessarily, and then yeah, then work on Deerfield. And these to, dollar to do, amounts yeah. you gave us back in July are still the there's an is that the new one or is that an old one? There's a new know, this the, is July. There's one attached in this director's report okay. that is the most up to date information as to what we're charging um, for standby. Yep. So, so I think I think the South County <coughs> EMS should capture those funds. They shouldn't be contributing to the town of Deerfield. Right. Right. Yeah, they they should be going to. Yeah. It just goes into the town. The right town now. can bill it and collect it. Just transfer it to us when it gets collected. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, and we and we pay for it. Yeah. We we pay the town of Deerfield for those services. Just so in case anybody's watching on TV, yes. they understand that South County right. pays. A tidely sum to the town of Deerfield for those administrative services. Great. So, yeah. okay, anything else? Nope, that's all I have.
Can we obtain a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Aye. 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 <laughs> we have a 6-0 vote. We declare a 655.